Hi there, I'm glad to see you. My name is Mitro Mzhensky and in this video we're going to talk about forward ref function in Angular. Since I released the video about bridge pattern, which is by the way a very useful one, and this video you can check out later following this link, I have been getting questions like um, shouldn't we use the forward ref function in this particular case? And I decided to make this video and explain why we can drop this forward ref function in this particular case and in which use cases we have to use forward ref. This video is going to be quite advanced and if you just started with Angular uh, it might be that it will be quite hard to understand things what I will be explaining. However, if you are planning to improve your skills as an Angular developer, I can recommend you the great course for beginners, which I personally uh, used many years ago. And the link will be in the video description. And we're getting started. So let's have a look at the example I prepared for you. Basically, this is the example from the video about the bridge pattern. I just copied this into the separate project in order to not mix up things. And basically, this is one model which has three components, velocity widget, weather widget and widget proper. And uh, velocity and uh, weather widget, it's um, like very basic components. Let me hide it. It has some logic, it implements the widget interface and also we provide the widget token and we assign existing class to this token, right? And the next weather widget is the same pretty much. Yeah, it just has different name, some different uh, logic for refreshing, but it also has this provider uh, which provides the widget and to this widget will be assigned the instance of this component. Then inside the wrapper, uh, wrapper just uses the content child and fetches the widget, which will be either uh, weather or velocity and just, I don't know, trigger some methods um, from these concrete widgets like refresh, load and, and so on. And how it looks like it, uh, inside the app component, we uh, use this component, this wrapper and some concrete widget. And this is how it looks in the browser. Yeah. So if it's not uh, super clear, uh, again, check the video about uh, bridge pattern. So you will get some basic understanding. Yeah, so this, those are two um, widgets. And the question uh, from my subscribers was basically for regarding this part. So shouldn't we use the forward ref function? So let's figure it out. I will revert this everything for now. And uh, let's have a look at the definition of the forward ref function and what documentation says about this. So it allows us to refer to the references which are not yet defined. Hmm. And inside the usage nodes, we can see the example that we have the class door, it has the property lock, and it tries to uh, inject the lock class but the lock class is defined after the, uh, in, when we're trying to inject this. So at this point of time, it is undefined. And if we have a look at our example, we could see pretty much the similar thing. So we try to access to velocity component before we actually declare it right here. So, it looks like this is a great example or a great candidate for forward trap use case. However, if we open the terminal and try to build it, 
I build it with the ng build mongol false uh, environment variable in order to um, disable the uglifying of our bundle. So it, it is easier than to read the code. So let's wait a little bit. Okay, build is ready. So let's copy this velocity widget component and try to find it inside our main bundle. Okay, let's just press command key and F in order to uh, make it uh, prettify this everything. Yeah, here we go. And now I want to find our velocity widget component. And there is an interesting thing. So we can see that velocity widget component is defined right here. However, however, uh, this part with providers, uh, you remember this provide widget use existing, is declared after. So at this point of time, we already de declared the velocity widget component. Yeah, we see it right here. And that's why it works, because uh, despite we see it like if it was defined before, um, be before class declaration. In fact, these things right here inside the um, annotations are processed after. So after compilation, we get the situation when this class defined before. All right, that's clear. I hope why it's working. However, in which case we would need to use forward ref. And if we have a look at the provider right now, we see that this provider is not reusable, but most probably we would like to extract this to some constant, right? I will create constant, let's say, widget provider, which is any, and I'm going to assign um, this object to this constant. And of course I have to provide it right here. And immediately we see that it complains and says that class velocity widget component used before its declarations. The one way could be uh, it's to move it behind the class and it would work because now we have the reference uh, to uh, this class when it's already defined. However, uh, here we already get complain, another complaint that block scoped variables widget provider used before its declaration. So uh, if to put it simple here, uh, it will be undefined at this point of time. So we cannot uh, use it also here. So I'm going to revert and this is exactly the use case for uh, forward ref function. And if we will use it like this, we get read from, oops, I forgot. We get read from the error message. And if we check our application one more time, we see it works fine. Yeah, I can refresh here, there, everything fine. And now let's try one more time build uh, our application. And until it's being built, this is the great time to subscribe to my channel in order to not miss my other videos. All right, it is done. And now let's see how looks our compiled code when we declare the provider outside. So I will go to the dist folder and open the main file again. So let's uh, prefy it. All right, here we go. And let's find our, our velocity widget. And you can see now there is our use existing and forward ref which uh, points to this, uh, what is variable? Yeah, variable function, whatever. 
But if we would use um, not the forward traf, but we define the velocity widget uh, like this, we would see that velocity widget would appear before the class declarations. All right. So if we try to find this, yeah, it would be the first entrance. Yeah, here we go. So this is it would fail if we are not using the uh, for our draft in this case. So I can close it. Another use case might be is if you have multiple uh, components or directives inside one file. It sounds like anti-pattern, I know, but in some cases, this is the way to avoid the circular dependencies. And we will see the real life use case from Angular Material uh, just in a few minutes. Uh, but uh, let, let me say a few words about circular dependency. How you can create uh, the circular dependency. Um, we can create it from this widget provider easily. We can create uh, another file, I will name it uh, provider or widget provider. Here we go. I will place here uh, the widget and we have to, of course, export it. And I have to inject the velocity widget. I have to inject forward ref and I have to inject the widget uh, token, which is yeah, basically injection token. And uh, then I have to uh, remove uh, this here. Uh, I have to import this from widget provider. And if we save it and check the output from our compiler, we see that provider is not a model. Oh, okay, it was not just saved. Uh, yeah, now we see warning that we have the circle dependency detected, which means that uh, velocity widget component imports the provider, which imports velocity component again. Yeah, so uh, here we import the provider inside the uh, widget uh, component. And here we also import widget component. So we get this um, circular dependency. This is the first way how you can uh, create it. Then you may, the other way how you can uh, create it, it's uh, as example here from velocity component, you can uh, inject, you can try to inject the parent which is um, uh, wrapper, yeah. So I checked widget wrapper components. So for my velocity uh, component, where is this velocity? There will be injected this widget wrapper. That's what I want to have. Maybe I have to uh, somehow adjust the state of the child component depends on the parent, right? That's uh, can easily can be such a use case and we will see it. Uh, in the uh, following example. And uh, in in order to complete uh, our uh, circular dependency inside the widget wrapper, we have to create uh, dependency exactly to the velocity component as well. So let's say we want to also use content child and uh, this time we don't rely on um, widget uh, injection token, but we want to directly get access to um, how it's called uh, velocity widget. So velocity widget component, I will say that it velocity, velocity is not, a, okay. So if we save it and rebuild, we will see again the circular dependency because our parent depend on the child and the child depend on the uh, parent. And because they are in the different files, we get this uh, circular dependency. And putting components under uh, one file, components which are depending on each other, 
might be a solution. Yeah, there are different ways to resolve this circular dependency, but this is one of it. But this is definitely not the best example. And let's have a look at the real life example from Angular Material. And in particular, this tab nav bar uh, component. And in fact, I will maybe zoom out a little bit to uh, see more code or I can collapse it. You can see that uh, this file has uh, two components under the one uh, file. Yeah, we have mat tab navigation and we have mat tab link. And these two components depend on each other. If we expand this part, we will see that we have content child with forward ref, by the way, uh, to mat tab link. And if we expand a mat tab link, we will see that inside the constructor we inject mat tab navigation. So if we split them to different files, we will get the circular dependency and uh, this is the way how to avoid it. Again, one of the ways. Uh, however, I wanted to show you that exactly here they're using the forward ref exactly because they define it, uh, they define the parent class before the child. However, they need to refer to this child. And that's why they're using the forward ref. And yeah, you can do it for also safety reason to not depend on the order of your class inside the file. This is not, I would say, uh, good uh, when you uh, have such a fragile code because you can do <laughs> just refactoring, just replace the um, order of classes and then you get unpredictable error and you are <laughs> really, really surprised how it could happen. I just like, I didn't change the things. I just replaced the order. So, uh, this forward ref you can use for kind of sa safety reasons. So the quick conclusion we can make from it is that forward ref just captures some reference to some certain class and it resolves it when it is safe to resolve when this certain class has been declared. And then uh, Angular uses uh, resolve forward ref in order to resolve it. And yeah, this is pretty much everything what it does. All right, guys, that's it. I hope now you have better understanding how forward ref function works. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. And if you would like to express your gratitude, please share this video with your friends, colleagues, uh, leave your feedback, comments, hit thumbs up if you like this or dislike if you didn't like for whatever reason. Um, I appreciate this because any activity under my videos allow this channel to grow. And I wish you a productive week ahead and see you in the future.